For more than 25 years, the main Yankee nuclear facility in Wiscasset, Maine, was that state's largest generator of electricity. By 1999, it was decided that the plant had reached the end of its useful life and would be decommissioned. The decommissioning process essentially returns the site to a greenfield condition as required by the NRC operating license. The radioactive components are removed and sent for decontamination or burial. The reactor pressure vessel, RPV, is typically the largest component to be removed and is also one of the most radioactive. This combination of size and radioactivity level presents many unique challenges that must be overcome to remove the reactor vessel from the plant's containment building. After a competitive bidding process, Barnhart Crane and Rigging was awarded a lump sum contract to remove the RPV. The scope of the project involved not only the RPV extraction, but positioning the burial cask into the containment building, locating the reactor into the cask, and removing the entire package from containment. As well as placing it into the shipping skid in preparation for transport. The engineers at Barnhart devised an economic method to utilize portions of the plant's existing overhead polar crane for the containment rigging. The method consisted of an extensive analysis of the crane's box girders and the use of a specialized Barnhart trolley system. Barnhart's solutions to the challenges proved to be both safe and efficient. Competitors had proposed an independent rigging system that was more expensive and hindered other decommissioning work. Our creative solution was key to obtaining the contract. The hoisting system. Every step of the process required ingenuity, adaptation and modification of existing equipment, as well as design and fabrication of new components in order to ensure that the handling of the RPV and its burial cask would be completed in a safe, controlled manner and in accordance with all NRC regulations. It required exhaustive planning and many man hours of design, engineering and testing before the actual removal. First, extensive evaluation was performed on the customer's overhead crane girders. The reactor now weighed more than it did when it was installed due to the shielding grout that had to be added to the reactor vessel to reduce the radioactivity levels. Our original plan called for temporary supports for the crane girders. But after Barnhart's thorough review of the crane design codes, we determined the existing girders could be used without the cost and interruption of such temporary structures. To lift the load, a new trolley system had to be designed and fabricated. It allowed the use of Barnhart's existing 450-ton strand jacks and also spread the load in a manner that enabled the plant's existing overhead crane girders to support the load. Our trolley design also incorporated Barnhart's load cell system. This was used to measure the load on the system during both the load test and the reactor vessel lift. A positive means of load measurement ensured the system was always kept within its design limits. An RPV is highly radioactive. During the lifting process, the area would not be safe for equipment operators. The process had to account for every contingency should problems occur. Barnhart's existing strand jack control system was modified to provide a fully redundant automatic remote control system for operating the jacks. Each jack was provided with its own hydraulic supply. Each supply system had two pump units, two power supplies, and two sets of control valves. The system also had the ability to be manually bypassed. The operators could control the entire lifting process from a remote location. In case of system failure, they had the ability to overcome by switching to backup systems. This new system enabled Barnhart to satisfy the strict nuclear requirements to perform this critical lift. Testing. Prior to conducting the lift, a load test of all components would confirm the structural evaluation of the crane girders as well as verify structural integrity of the new trolley system. Barnhart devised a method of testing that eliminated the use of test weights. We also designed a lifting bar that could be inserted into a hole cut into a structural wall of the containment building. The wall would act as a dead man for the system to lift. 
the load cells incorporated into the trolley would measure the load imposed on the wall by the strand jacks. For the reactor vessel container, Barnhart designed and built the up-ending, down-ending system, incorporating our slide system to enable us to not only up-end, down-end the system, but also to position the container in and out of the containment building. Using the new strand jack trolley, load distributing slide system, and the redundant control system, the RPV was lifted 80 feet from its operating position, transferred laterally to the equipment hatch area, and lowered into the burial cask that had been previously positioned to receive the RPV. The RPV was then sealed and secured in its burial cask prior to removal from the containment building. The completed package now weighed in excess of 900 tons and still needed to be down-ended and transferred through the equipment hatch. The RPV cask had been positioned in such a way that would cause the tailing system to carry most of the load and allow the polar crane to lower the head of the package. However, to overcome physical limitations of the plant's overhead crane hooks, as well as to properly align the hooks with the RPV lifting lugs, a special spreader bar and swivel rigging system were needed. With the rigging system now complete, the RPV package was transferred to the tailing frame mounted on BCNR hydraulic slide equipment, down-ended, and transferred through the equipment hatch to a staging area near the containment building. To place the reactor into its shipping saddle, Barnhart's lift tower system was configured to operate as a stationary gantry system to be used in conjunction with two 800-ton lift systems gantries. The lift tower system was set up to lift the majority of the reactor and cask assembly, enabling the use of standard gantries to complete the lift and avoid the use of more costly equipment. The package was lifted, the shipping skid positioned under it using self-propelled Goldhofer transporters, and the package lowered into the skid. When the 917-ton RPV package arrived at the burial site in Barnwell, South Carolina, it was the largest ever received by that nuclear disposal facility. From the very beginning, the single overriding concern about the project was safety. While this is true of any project, the radioactivity issues surrounding this project greatly magnified safety concerns. Project safety was driven by Barnhart's safety management system, as well as the requirements of the contractor and owner's safety programs. Other management systems in place included Barnhart's standard operating procedures system for equipment operation and our QualCard system for personnel qualifications. All equipment was used in accordance with its design parameters, both the standard equipment such as the lift systems gantry, rigging and transporters, and the custom Barnhart equipment such as the modular lift tower, strand jack and rigging systems. And the result of this massive engineering effort, exhaustive testing and almost fanatical commitment to safety? In the fall of 2002, the reactor vessel was removed on time, on budget, and with no incidents, first aid, or other personnel injuries. Indeed, the main Yankee Atomic Power RPV removal project presented some extraordinary challenges, all of which, we're proud to say, were met successfully by the dedicated professionals at Barnhart.